Identification of unknown bacterial cultures is one of the major responsibilities of microbiologists. Samples of blood, tissue, food, water, and cosmetics are examined daily in laboratories around the world. Such identification requires a series of tests. Results from these tests are recorded in a results table in a notebook. The observation column is where you record what you actually see for the test, whereas the interpretation column states what that observation means. The tests performed in this lab may differ from those used in your own lab. Follow your instructor's procedure. Once the tests are performed and results recorded, the actual identification is done by comparing the results to an ID matrix. An ID matrix lists the characteristic results for several bacterial species. A single test result cannot give an accurate identification because different species may give the same result for any single test. For example, the growth characteristics on TSA for Enterobacter aerogenes and Escherichia coli are identical. Additionally, Bacteria can pick up mutations or plasmids that confer an unexpected result for your particular sample. Performing multiple tests improves the accuracy of your identification. We'll begin by inoculating a number of media tubes with our unknown, a TSA slant, a tryptone broth for the indole test, MRVP media, a urea slant, and fermentation tests for glucose, lactose, and sucrose. Label each of your tubes and inoculate them from the unknown culture provided. Place your newly inoculated tubes in the incubator. The TSA slant and fermentation tubes should be incubated for 24 hours. The tryptone broth, MRVP broth, and urea slant should be incubated for 48 hours. Place the original unknown tube in the refrigerator or as directed by your instructor. Clean up your work area when you've finished. After 24 hours, it's time to record the results for our particular unknown. The results for your unknown will likely be different. Look at the culture characteristics of your unknown on the TSA slant. Here, the culture has a translucent, off-white color. Record your observations in your results table. Perform a gram stain from this fresh TSA culture. Record the gram stain results in the results table. Our unknown stained red, so red is our observation. We interpret this red color to mean our unknown is gram negative. Similarly, the unknown appeared to be rods, which we interpret as being bacilli. Record and interpret your own results for your unknown. We'll now record the fermentation results. Here's the glucose fermentation. It shows a yellow color and a bubble in the Durham tube. We interpret that observation as acid and gas. Here's the lactose fermentation tube. It has a deep red color with no bubble. We interpret that observation as negative. Here's the last fermentation tube, sucrose, showing a yellow color and a bubble in the Durham tube. As with glucose, we interpret this observation as acid and gas. Properly dispose of these tubes now that their results are recorded. We'll wait another 24 hours for the remaining tubes to finish incubating. Clean up your work area when you have finished. Once the remaining culture tubes are ready, it's time to record those results. Add COVAX reagent to the tryptone broth tube to complete the indole test.
In our case, a red layer has developed. We interpret this observation as a positive result. The culture in the MRVP tube will be used in two separate tests, the methyl red test and the vogue proskauer test. Transfer one milliliter to an empty tube and set it aside for the vogue proskauer test. Add methyl red to the remaining MRVP media to complete the methyl red test. In our case, the media turned red. We interpret this observation as a positive result. Complete the Vogue Proskauer test by adding the appropriate Barrett's reagents and carefully agitating the culture. After 30 minutes, the tube is still yellow. We interpret that observation as a negative result. Finally, here's the urea tube, showing a pink color. We interpret this observation as a positive result. After you've recorded your results, properly dispose of these tubes along with any other tubes remaining from this lab. We're now ready to identify our unknown. We'll do this by comparing our interpretations in the results table to the characteristic results shown in the ID matrix. We'll approach this through a process of elimination. Our unknown bacteria are gram-negative bacilli, so we can eliminate the gram-positive species, Bacillus cereus, Micrococcus luteus, and Staphylococcus aureus. Our unknown produced acid and gas from glucose and sucrose, but was negative for fermentation of lactose. We can eliminate Pseudomonas aeruginosa, as it does not ferment glucose or sucrose. And we can eliminate Enterobacter aerogenes and Escherichia coli, because they produce acid and gas from lactose. When a single organism is left, Verify that the results match the remaining tests for that organism in the ID matrix. Variable entries mean the species can produce different results depending on the specific species strain. In other words, any result on that particular test is consistent with the organism. Our confidence in the identification depends on how many test results match the characteristic results in the ID matrix. Typically, they all match for a single organism. This is a good sign your identification is correct. As a final check, look at the other organisms and see how many test results don't match. We'll do this by highlighting the ID matrix with blue and red, according to our test results. Blue indicates that our test matched that result. Red indicates it did not. Only Proteus vulgaris has the culture characteristics we observed. Four species share the Gram-Stain reaction we observed, and five share the same morphology. As we fill in the highlights for the remaining test results, a pattern emerges. For one, every test result is consistent with Proteus vulgaris being our unknown, but equally important, every other organism is inconsistent with at least one of our test results. Escherichia coli is the next closest match, but even that organism is ruled out by three separate tests. Our culture observation, lactose fermentation, and urease results all suggest our unknown is not Escherichia coli. Remember, it's possible that a single test could be performed incorrectly, or interpret it incorrectly. However, it's unlikely that all three tests are incorrect. This means we're quite confident that Proteus vulgaris is the identity of our unknown. What's the identity of yours?